Pringles first became available in 1967 in limited areas, but then more widespread in 1975. At that point, competitors became upset and demanded they stop calling them chips because they weren't made strictly of potatoes. After an insane ruling by the FDA, Pringles had to stop using the word chips and start using crisps. The reason that ruling is currently in question is that it was made five years prior to the birth of Mr. Chip who has final say on all these matters. It's time to open up a nearly 50-year-old cold case and pit five different Pringles flavors against each other in a battle royale. You tried it! You tried that! All hail King Julius! It's the Pringles episode. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. Once you pop, that's great. (laughs) And Nick Geiger. It really is great. I love popping. Mr. Chip. Hey, what's up, baby? Were you aware that these weren't chips? Because I wasn't until I read that. Well, I, yeah, I, like, I have, I am Mr. Chip, and I'm also uh, Prince Crisp in something in certain areas. Okay. So I wasn't, I had to get, make sure. You minored in Crisp, right? I minored in Crisp. (laughs) No, that's bizarre. I don't know why they would do that. And we have a special guest today, because we cannot do this alone. It is our great friend and longtime listener back in the United States. It's Chrissy. Chrissy, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm so good. I'm so glad to be back with you guys. You have been uh, saving me from depression during COVID. So thank you so much. (laughs) Well, welcome back. We're glad you uh, were able to make it safe back from Libya and Tunisia. Thank you. Yeah, I was just telling uh, a couple of you guys before the show, flying these days is actually fantastic international flights because they're they're not very full, no babies, no old people. Yeah, uh, yeah there's silver linings to COVID. I'm sure you guys have found some silver linings. Yeah, I hate old people. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah, I've, I've been spending a lot more time with my dog since like, I never leave the house, so that's pretty good. What Chad's comment of once you once you pop, that's great, is because I had found the generic Pringles called Prongles and <laughs> sent them a picture and it had a, like a skateboarding pig, cartoon pig on it. Um, and it was just it was just called Prongles. And at the bottom, the slogan was once you pop dot dot dot. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> we were laughing about it over text. And then wasn't one of the flavors just like potato and salt? Which yeah. is just plain. <laughs> yeah. Like normal was potato like, chip flavor. Well, so apparently Pringles had the copyright on plain. <laughs> yeah. I had actually heard of Prongles because uh, we used to like, j- make jokes about Pringles at work for some reason, me and this coworker. And we like went to go Google Pringles to like do a Photoshop with it and found Prongles and we couldn't stop laughing. We thought it was made up. And then I kept seeing it like on shelves and like there's literally somebody was like, ah, they're, they're making a lot of money over there. Pringles. Let's just call it. I don't, I don't know what you want to call it. Ah, Prongles. Just change a vowel. Where does one find Prongles? I have never actually seen them, I should say, but we they're definitely online. You can see them on the shelves somewhere. I don't know. Yeah. Where did you find them, Novak? I remember that that was part of a segment at some point. Yeah. Like generic names of something. So I looked it up and I don't know where the picture is from. It looked like, oh. like Dollar Tree or something like that. So, yeah. Okay. So I have no good transition into this because I know that Chrissy is going to tell us a story and I can't remember at all what it's about. So <laughs> we're going to say, Chrissy, something happened to you, right? At some point in your life. <laughs> something did. Something did. Well, Chado and I were talking about me coming onto the podcast uh, since I knew I was coming home just for a few weeks um, back to the glorious USA. And the last time I was in Denver, so I'm, I'm visiting Denver where my brother lives. It's not really home to me, um, but it's where I come because uh, it's the closest place to home, I guess, these days. So <laughs> Chad and I were remembering a story from last year when I was here um, where I had the bright idea to try psychedelics for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you tried that? <laughs> <laughs> a very different kind of snack. I'm not, I've, I've dallied very minimally in, in a, a illicit drug use, but uh, I figured what the hell, I'd give it a whirl. I ran into uh, an old coworker of mine 
slash drug dealer. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he's always been, so I'm a psychologist. I think the the listeners know that if they're, if they're avid followers and he was a, a trainee of mine years ago back in San Diego and he moved here to Denver and he's always been into super hippy dippy stuff, yoga, chakras, energy, Math. <laughs> Hardcore drugs. <laughs> it's like, check out this cocaine flavor of Prongles. <laughs> you literally can't stop once you pop. <laughs> once you pop, that's your heart stopping. <laughs> so I've always given him a hard time about all the sort of hippy dippy stuff he does and it goes on these retreats to the mountains and and he right. said, well, well this, this weekend, you, you know, you're not doing anything. Uh, I'm going on a medicine retreat to a house in, in Golden, which is a suburb. So is that what junkies call getting fucked yeah. up? A medicine uh, retreat? I promise this is a fully functioning adult. <laughs> okay, right. great. Uh-huh. And, you, you did amoxicillin, so you're telling us. <laughs> <laughs> amoxicillin Pringles. <laughs> And he said, we, we, we go to this place and you, it's a couple hundred bucks and you spend the night in this house with a bunch of your new best friends, a group of strangers and a man who was trained by a Peruvian medicine man will deliver medicine to you based on what your like inner needs are. That description got worse with literally every <laughs> sentence. <laughs> you pay $100. Wait, what? <laughs> You'll be around a bunch of people you don't know. Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> a man was going to inject you with drugs. Okay, hold on. I'm back on the $100 part. <laughs> So I figured, you know, like marijuana is legal places. And I think in I think in some places now mushrooms are legal. So I figured, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a try. Like, I know this guy, I trust him 100%. I told my brother and his wife, so I had them on backup. And yeah, sure. I mean, people do this, right? Maybe, maybe we don't. I guess oh, so. Yeah, I invite women to empty <laughs> houses to try to ply them with drugs constantly. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Fucking A. And they pay me for the privilege? I don't know. <laughs> so we went there. I went with him and his his girlfriend, who he had told me, like, oh, I've, I've met the, the girl of my dreams. Like, this is the one I'm going to marry. And so... She's got a hundred dollars. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and she she's never done it either. So the two of you will both be new. So you'll you'll have somebody new to do it together. Yeah. I'm like, she's still a perfect stranger to me, so it doesn't really help. <laughs> she's the last face you'll ever see. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so we go out to this house, and it is a group of maybe ten people, and it's like the island of misfit toys for adults. Just this random mix of uh, of societal. Rejects might be a strong word, but people who haven't exactly fit in. There was like a a married couple of teenagers who had gone through marital problems, but they started coming on medicine retreats and and it helped their marriage. There were a couple of like old divorcees with pinky rings who were like, oh yeah, this has really helped me get in touch with my inner child. The Peruvian shaman, you know, your usual people. (laughs) (laughs) It's just another night in Golden, Colorado. (laughs) So you have to sit around as a group beforehand and you have to talk about your intention, like what your intention is for the night and what your goal (laughs) is. And then the the guy trained by the shaman who used to work in the circus. Uh (laughs) Did you what was his circus job? Did you find that out? I don't remember what it was. I think it was working. I think it was unicycle juggling, like sort of generic. <laughs> Are you just naming circus stuff now? <laughs> ah, he had a whip and a chair. And I think he rode a monkey. I'm not sure. His, his job was administering medicine to elephants so that they didn't hate their lives constantly being in the circus. <laughs> Until one day he gave it too much and boom, right on the, the tightrope walker. What did you say your intention was? I said the truth, which is I'm a, I'm a science I'm science based, and I've never done anything like this before. <laughs> this is purely research. I'm just doing research. Now <laughs> well, pass me that H. <laughs> and I said I'm just having an open mind. If if I can have some sort of like mind opening experience, 
that's great. If I pop and I can't stop, that's great. Uh, <laughs> but I said, I've, I've never done anything like this before. I'm not really sure this is my thing, but I'm here with an open mind and, and I hope to at least have, have a good night. But other people were there like there was a woman who who had just left an abusive relationship in Costa Rica and was now living in her car in Colorado. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and then there, there was my favorite character who was this beautiful woman. So a few years younger than us, like probably early mid thirties, just dropped dead beautiful, very like hippy dippy. And, and she, she does her, her like intention. And she says, I, I just want to share with everyone that um, I know everybody knows my name is Amber. Hi, Amber. And she says, but I, I've been doing a lot of, of meditating and a lot of like deep personal reflection and I finally learned my, my spirit name. Mm -hmm. And I look over at my friend and I'm like, I can't, I'm out. I am out at spirit (laughs) names. Like I thought I was just going to get a really good buzz. What was it? My spirit name is Sephora. (laughs) <laughs> oh boy! She ju- she just picked whatever like a uh, cosmetic brand was. The first <laughs> right. Laura, yeah, that's it. Uh, my, it's like Nike. a representative of capitalism and unfair beauty standards for women, <laughs> right. and that's her spirit name. Her, her spirit her spirit name is whichever company does the most animal testing. <laughs> <laughs> Was the last guy just some like stoner guy named Todd in the corner? He's like, I just want to get <laughs> fucked up, man. I don't know. <laughs> but that was that was that was sort of me. I was like, I just want to have a good time. But everybody else then was coming with like their intention and and their their need for like. There was a yoga room in the back, and and there were these bedrooms with like with pillows everywhere. And, and the only rule was that like you're not supposed to have sex. Todd, get up. It's like, see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. He's like, oh, Sephora, are you? Oh, what? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you go one by one and you meet with the guy trained by the shaman. And, and I said my bit, like, I really don't believe in this stuff, guys, but I really want to have a good time. Um, and so, of course, he like, he like thinks on it and presses his palms together and closes his eyes. And I'm like, oh, Oh God. Mm-hmm. And then pulls out like something of a vial. The, the other promise I had was everything was natural. Everything was organic drug. Yeah. So they put it in the little like white pill cup that you, that you take when you take drugs, like at the hospital or from a doctor and you all go to the room and you, and you take, you all take your medicine together. So they never call it drugs all night long. It was medicine. Right. And every time someone said medicine in my head, I was like, it's just drugs. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody takes their medicine and then they're like, now whoever would like to come join us in the yoga room. And I'm like, I'm out. (laughs) And I went outside and sat by the fire where I stayed all night sitting by the fire. So my friend, uh, let's call him Derek. uh, Everybody starts to just get really buzzed. (laughs) (laughs) And people are sort of stumbling around and everybody's, everybody's happy and relaxed and, and one of the old divorcees with the pinky ring, of course, comes right over. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. And he was like, Christine, uh, I'm hoping I, I could just sit with you and, and feel your energy. Oh, God. <laughs> the spirits are telling me we need to break the sex rule. <laughs> <laughs> the spirits are telling me your shirt looks very heavy. <laughs> just unburden yourself, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told him to buzz off. I was like, no, 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 I'm good. Thanks. So what what did you, what was your actual experience taking these drugs? It basically just felt like a mix of, of like marijuana and alcohol, but, but like alert. Like I never got sleepy. I never got tired. And so just stayed up the whole night feeling like pretty happy and pretty mellow. And it was fine. It was good. Yeah. So you said before it was the guy tailored it your dosage to each person based on what you wanted to get out of it. So you took different like medicine than the other. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was called the illuminator. Mm. Mm. (laughs) So you were just like mildly buzzed. It was, it just kind of felt like you were a little, no, I was pretty buzzed. I mean, I was like a stumbly buzz. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did you turn around from the fire and there was just a complete orgy and you're like, well, (laughs) Well, so (laughs) 
Uh, thank you for thank you for this very natural segue, Novak. <laughs> so they also had a they had a mattress on the other side of the fire, and people could go there and whatever and, you do, don't <laughs> fuck on that mattress. <laughs> Jesus, the mat there's just like lube everywhere, <laughs> candles all around, his rose petals, vibrating mattress, lube, and <laughs> just like a huge movie theater screen playing hardcore porn. Don't fuck, don't. Fuck. <laughs> the shaman is giving out pills with his dick. Oh no, no fucking in here. Don't worry about it. Just take a pill. <laughs> so there were a few people, like sort of, including my friend Derek and, and his girlfriend, almost fiance. They were there, and there was another girl who was who was seventeen, whose parents dropped her off for the night. What the no, fuck? Really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, f- I felt like the squarest medicine taker yeah. of all time. Yeah. Father of the year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? They said no sex. I mean, I saw the mattress and everything, but it, it looked unused. <laughs> so they were all sort of like just lying there and, and people are just sort of like touching each other. But it, it was, I would agree it was more sensual than sexual based on, on my fire sitting stance. But Mm -hmm. so people are rolling around, some people are moving around, and other people are just talking, and some people are having really intense conversations. And I'm talking to another one of the pinky ring guys, and he, long story short, because we we only have so much time on this podcast, tells me that Sephora (laughs) is actually, um, he's her sugar daddy. Mm. Oh, nice. <laughs> so she is a sensual massage artist and teaches Kama Sutra and sensual massage. And I'm sorry, just uh, one sec. Could you repeat what her phone number was again? <laughs> <laughs> so th- this is important for the story later. So basically, I find out that this guy had, he's taken her on trips. Like he he basically has paid her to be her his girlfriend for a very long time. So I'm like, God, the plot is thickening in this place. Yeah. What a tangled web we weave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we get through the night. And it was it was fun. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't anything like that blew my socks off. I, I just wished I could have done it with a bunch of my friends. Yeah. And they were like, but that's not the point. It's not about it's not about recreation. This is about like finding your inner soul and speaking to it. It's about not being able to to uh, identify them to police later. <laughs> <laughs> So next morning, people had gotten a couple hours of sleep in different rooms or couches in the house, and you have to gather together in the in the sharing circle to talk about your experience and and your if you met your intention. Right. <laughs> it was so bad. I think there was even a a, a talking stick, <laughs> <laughs> which no adult gathering like you that you pass around and only the person who has it can talk or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Great. No, a stick that talks, Chad. Yeah, well, <laughs> after all those drugs, maybe. Like... It was like a talking couch, a talking <laughs> stick. It was awesome, man. Oh, and by the way, this talking stick, I fucked it. I know he said he fucked it, but I couldn't help it. Shoved it in my ass. Anyways, your turn to talk. Okay, Todd, enough about that. <laughs> So people are sharing that they had these like mind blowing experiences. Like I, I, I met my inner child last night. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I've come closer to my spirit than ever before. And I'm looking around thinking all of us were just completely fucked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you had like a medium ish buzz for yeah. 12 hours. Yeah. So are you, yeah, are you yeah. panicking now deciding what, you're going to make up like everyone's clearly just spouting <laughs> bullshit and you're like what the hell am i going to say <laughs> i figured since i've been so frank at the beginning i'd continue to be frank uh which was also the name of the talking stick <laughs> <laughs> so frank and i i said look guys i said you guys are a nice group of people it was a fun night i had a really good buzz i enjoyed myself but I didn't have any kind of epiphany. I didn't meet my inner child. I'm, I'm not sure I have one, but if I do, I certainly didn't meet them. I met this other guy's actual child that he dropped <laughs> off here, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Were they just completely pissed when you said this? They're just you just crushed their spirits. 
Uh, no, people were pretty understanding. I think they were a bit disappointed because people were really like, it's your first time and, and your first time is it can be the best time. And but you have to really believe in it. So it, it's like any of these of these like uh, like f- pseudoscience kind of things like, oh, it didn't work for you. I guess it's because you didn't believe in it enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right. So did like you said that and then it got quiet and some dude next to you leaned over and he's like, hey, we're all just making up crazy shit. Just say something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell them you realize you're Superman or something. Just say something. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go home. Like the night is over. Let's move along. I've had enough of people sharing their their chakras and energies. Yeah. And so it's my it's my friend Derek, his girlfriend, soon to be fiance. And the second we step outside of the house, she starts railing on him. She slaps him on the arm and starts screaming at him, you dirty dog, what were you doing? I can't believe you just screaming at him. Oh, she called him a dirty dog. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) What a filthy mouth. I knew your spirit animal was dirty dog. (laughs) (laughs) What was she pissed at him about? Or you don't know yet? Yeah, I didn't know at the time. I had no idea. But she was pissed because apparently on the mattress, on the other side of the fire, when they'd been Mm -hmm. rolling around. (laughs) The old mattress. (laughs) He had, and and pardon my need for explicit detail, Uh he had sniffed the armpits of Sephora. (laughs) (laughs) How much did that cost? And told her... (laughs) And told that was her, an extra hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and told her, I really like the smell of your pheromones. Mm, oh. All right. A dirty dog. Yeah, dirty, dirty dog, dog. fits. <laughs> it, it fits, yeah. Yeah. That's literally what a dog does. It smells <laughs> other animals. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very accurate insult by her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, it turns out he also raised his leg and pissed all over the mattress. So he really was a dirty <laughs> Wow. So I, I'm, they're driving me home. So I'm about to get in a car for like 30 minutes with them. And, and she's screaming at him. And he's super embarrassed. And he's trying to say, you know, can we just talk about this later? Can we talk about this later? And she's like, you were just had to be the alpha dog walking around with your parade of women following you all night. So we're driving down the highway. I'm th- you're in the back seat. I'm like, do, do you do you do you jump in and say it's okay, guys? Like, calm down. Do you, do you try to yeah, support? Right. No, you jump out the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Open the door and whoop. <laughs> that's a be anywhere else on earth situation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Horribly awkward. So the kicker is the closure to the story is this this wild night in Denver, uh, bringing us back to where I am back in Denver now, is we're driving down the highway 70 miles per hour, and she yells, that's it. Take me to the abortion doctor. Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. As Chad says, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> Bonus weird thing. <laughs> so they had apparently found out that same day, that previous morning, that she was pregnant. Wow. Yeah. And that was how they decided to spend their night. Hold on. <laughs> so she found out she was pregnant and her first thought was, let me ingest a bunch of weird ass drugs from some guy. Yes. And then she was ready to give it all away because some dudes, well, some dude, her fiance, give it all away. She had it all. How could she give it away? <laughs> she was living the dream, pregnant and high. No, and, and, and Geiger, Geiger, not some guy. It was somebody who was trained by a Peruvian medicine man. Right, yeah, exactly. And, but like, just because of the armpit smell, I mean, I know it's not like a cool thing to do, but so the main main question, the main question of all, when are you going back? <laughs> <laughs> Two last points. One, I never paid. Whoa! Now who's the dirty dog? <laughs> <laughs> you dirty now. This was like a week before I was leaving uh, to go to Libya last year, and I just sort of so th- the other pieces. Then they dropped me off. I did text him later that day to be like, "Hey, are you guys okay?" Um, and he said, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're we're fine. We had a good conversation, and we're fine." And I've never talked to them again. <laughs> wow. Whoa! All right. 
And this is someone I've known 10 years. Uh, friendships yeah. have ended yeah. for less than that, really. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, so this was because this was last fall. So that kid yeah. is either born or not at this point. <laughs> yes. So this is a question I pose to you three. Yeah. Is yeah. I'm back in Denver. I'm, I'm here two more weeks. Mm-hmm. Do I contact them? Because uh, they could be together. They could not be. Or they could have a baby. Yeah, right. I, this is purely out of uh, purient, uh, purient interest, but yes, to, like for me, just yeah. for me, I want you to call them because I want to know what happened. But I mean, I would say you're with, I mean, it wasn't like you guys had a falling out. It was just, right? No. I mean, you just, no. You guys were fine. So I, yeah, maybe give them a call unless you just don't care about seeing them anymore, right? which is fine. We're really hard up for intro topics recently, so if you could just <laughs> call them. <laughs> just just text us, let us know what happened, and we'll spend a good 10 minutes talking about this baby we never met. <laughs> they also happen to live just, just like 10 minutes walking from where my brother is, so I, they're right here. All I would have to do is send a text. I'm very tempted, but I also don't want to have to pay a couple hundred bucks that I probably owe the guy. <laughs> <laughs> What a deadbeat. <laughs> I'm just hiding from him. So you guys think it's worth it? I, I, worth well, it? I mean, I don't... Contact him. I like the guy. He's a good guy. But like I said, I've known him for 10 years. It just We sort of sunk into this this awkward year of silence. Uh, do it with a couple days left so you can use it as an excuse that you're leaving. But just to find out. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And just be like, you're going to leave in two days, and but tell him... You're leaving like in three days and be like, oh, in three days, I'll get you the hundred dollars. I got to go to the ATM. <laughs> and then you're Olivia. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Give him a call and act surprised when Sephora answers the phone. <laughs> like, oh, hey. Here you have nice deodorant. I can smell your armpits from over here. <laughs> I can't come to the phone right now. Not schnoz deep in pit. <laughs> Okay, there's no segue from that to Pringles, so we're just going to eat Pringles. Um, we're going to try five different Pringles today. We're going to do it on a five-point scale, our usual scale, a love dat, like dat, indifferent to dat, dislike dat, or hate dat. And we had previously done the sour cream and onion Pringles in a head-to-head matchup against Lay's Stacks back in the archives. Um, so we are leaving that one out, and we have five to go today. Um, we're going to start, you can't start anywhere but the original. So we're going to start with the original. Yep. Um, and to learn that they were, these are crisps and not chips. And if you actually look at the uh, front of each of these little packages, it does say potato crisps on it. So I'm not sure, even though the first ingredient is dried potatoes, I'm not sure what it takes for the FDA to consider something a chip. Mr. Chip, what do you think? Yeah. Um, in my years of scientific research. Um, I think you just needs to look like a chip and crack and crunch in your mouth that you can call it a chip. I call these chips. I'm Mr. Chip. If I say so, I think it should be a chip. I mean, don't even they don't they even say like Fritos? Fritos are like corn chips, right? Those yeah. are chips. This is way more chip like than a They're Frito. Chips. I can't believe I'm actually really when you said that I couldn't believe the FDA bothered with that kind of ruling. Like, why would they care? Yeah. And if baked chips are still chips, even though they're not fried, that also exactly. seems like a like an important asterisk. It's a problem. We should say the reason for these particular flavors was we bought a six pack, a variety pack of Pringles from Amazon that had uh, all these flavors plus the, the sour cream and onion. So I would ask how people feel about Pringles in general, but since we're doing the original, we'll just talk about that with our rating. Um, so the Pringles are different than usual chips. The way that it breaks when you eat it is different. Guy, you're doing duck lips with this Pringles. You cannot resist. <laughs> you got to do duck lips. Uh, but Chrissy, as our guest, you have to go first. So uh, what do you think of the original Pringle? Yeah, I'm a fan. You can you can find Pringles in just about any country in the world, uh, sort of in their ubiquitous little can. Um, I like that it keeps them in the whole shape, usually. I like the shape of them, that there's the consistency um the plain one is super salty which i like in a chip i have read also that you're supposed to eat the pringle upside down yes so i think we should all be eating this upside down there's more flavor on the underside did you guys talk about this when you ate pringles in the past no but that seems wrong there's a top and bottom yeah there's slightly more seasoning on the bottom oh 
You're supposed to eat it the way you're holding it. So it's like U shape up. Opposite to your tongue. So it looks like a... Mm-hmm. No. That that seems wrong because your tongue would n- naturally fit into the other way. Right. Like Derek's nose in Sephora's armpit. Right. <laughs> Oh, you dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like that. Pringles are solid like that. They're reliable. They're consistent. You can find original flavor all around the world. You know what you're going to get like that. Like that to start, Geiger. I think I've talked about Pringles on the show before in general. I have a great, I don't even know why. It was only a couple times that I, I definitely associate Pringles with my grandfather for some reason. Like he always had a can in the car, like when we go to a brewery game or like, uh, they're really, that's another reason I like them is they're a really handy portable snack like when we go fishing we'll bring like the little cans and it's you can put the top back on it's like easy so you're not know, chips flopping around the boat it uh they're tasty like i i think uh, christy said it great they're really salty um i actually i know some people don't love the consistency of the uh chip slash crisp but i love it uh there's the way it kind of breaks apart in your mouth i love regular pringles they're super tasty i really enjoy them and i can pound a ton of them i ate this whole thing um i give this a love dad i love pringles Wow. A like yeah. and a love. All right, Chad, what do you think? Uh, Geiger said it. Some people don't like the consistency of the Pringles. And uh, one of those people is talking right now. I uh, I want a, a thicker, you know, a heartier chip. I want one that's got like a real crunch to it. Uh, I like a ruffled chip. I don't like a, a flat chip as much. I will say it's been a super long ass time since I've had an original Pringle. And they are better than I sort of remembered them being. Um, especially, I can't believe I'm saying this, once you flip them upside down. that I, I took a chip, I bit half of it upside down and half right side up, and there actually really is a difference. Mm-hmm. But they, the, it's just so plain and generic to me. I can't give it anything else but an indifferent to that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm torn. I, they're not bad. Like, I can eat them, but I generally don't seek out Pringles. And part of it is there is not enough flavor to them. Um, Chrissy said they were very salty. I think I just like a very, very salty chip because there's not enough salt on them for my preference. I'm going to go with Chad and do an indifferent to that. So a like, a love, two indifference. I am sort of bullish on maybe some of these other flavors being, uh, one of these being a showstopper at some point. So we'll see. Um, next let's go kind of to the next most normal flavor we see a lot. And that's the barbecue. I'm not sure I've ever had a barbecue Pringle ever. And I generally no. don't yeah, go to barbecue too. chips. Do you guys? No, me neither. No. So we have no barbecue fans, which isn't helping. Like, here's one that you can prove Chrissy's point because, like, you can, like, the top is just more red than the bottom. Like, you can see more of the flavor dust or whatever. How would you guys describe the flavor barbecue? Like, tomatoey, like a sweet tomatoey taste. Yeah, and it's, it's sweet tomato. I mean, that's what barbecue sauce is, right? It's like a sweet tomato sauce. There is a little, I'm detecting notes of smokiness here. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there is that that little bit. I don't know if that's good or not. Mr. Chip, you're going to lead off this one. I'll say barbecue chips in general are not, I like them okay. They're the one that uh, like I get sick of the quickest, I feel like. I don't know why. Maybe because it is a little sweeter and I like, like super salty stuff, kind of like Nick, Nick said. But I like this fine. I don't, these aren't that barbecuey to be honest like i don't detect a ton of extra flavor from these they just kind of taste like pringles with like a slight tang to them i would give these i like that i mean i like i i'll eat them they're fine but they're not like great i don't like they're just meh they're okay like that chad do you agree no (laughs) he could not wait Uh uh-huh uh-huh am i it's my turn huh no they suck (laughs) he's chomping at the talking stick over there (laughs) (laughs) Oh. <laughs> for sure yeah give me frank uh so it's too sweet i don't think the barbecue chip works and the the sweetness with the with the salty is sometimes it's sometimes a good thing right like a chocolate covered pretzel or something like that here it's it's overwhelmingly sweet combine that with the fact that the consistency is not something i'm into uh this is an easy dislike dab for me yeah i don't love barbecue chips and that this is not the best execution of one the barbecue sauce just tastes too like geiger described it as tomatoey which how we, how would we would describe barbecue sauce in general and this is like over the top with that it's too much tomato flavor um it's just a worse version of a regular pringle 
So they kind of went halfway on it and did it wrong. I'm going to give it another dislike that. A like and two dislikes. Chrissy, where do you fall? Yeah, I fall with the majority here. I also barbecue. That's why I ask. It's sort of a bizarre mix of flavors to me. It's not as good as sweet and salty. It's not kettle corn. The tomato is is too is too. It's not the right kind of sweet. It's not like a sugary sweet. It's it's more of a tomatoey sweet, which is not very clear. Um, so for me, dislike that. This is my least favorite chip always, and the Pringles don't do it any other. Doesn't bump it up any kind of notch. All right, three dislikes and a like. The original well out in the lead. Um, let's we'll split up the. We'll do one more before we do our segment. And let's do the standard cheddar cheese next. So this is just, we have another uh, one with cheddar in it later, but this is just the regular straight up cheddar cheese. And they look very cheesy. They're pretty cheesy. I open these all at the same time, but this one almost tastes more stale to me for some reason. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Chadwell, I hear that long moan. You get to lead us off this time. What do you think? This is weird because I ate two, and after the first one, I was like, oh, hey, this is pretty good. I'm going to give this a like that. And after the second one, I'm like, mm, nope, this is bad. Uh, the the cheese is just so artificial tasting to me. Uh, I don't like the aftertaste at all. But it is a notch better than the barbecue for sure. The original is just slightly better, so I'm going to go indifferent to that for these. Uh, I could probably... I would pick them for sure over the barbecue. And I could probably finish the rest of this tin if someone handed it to me at a party. (laughs) What if someone handed it to you at a drug retreat? (laughs) Then I'd I'd throw them all over the mattress and just start (laughs) sniffing them. (laughs) Uh, these, These are disappointing. I actually was really excited to try them. Yeah. And I thought they could be a strong contender, but they're not good. The cheese is is bad it's a bad execution of the cheese i don't think they're i actually don't know if i'd rather have this than the barbecue so to me this is this is a real failure and i know only gave the original and indifferent but they're much they're the best one so far so i'm gonna give this also a dislike dat i never thought of myself as disliking pringles but some of these flavors are not not doing well chrissy what do you think yeah, it is a super artificial flavor. Uh, I'm not even sure it tastes like cheddar, just sort of like generic cheese flavor, um, American snack flavor. Uh, it doesn't leave a very good mouthfeel afterwards. Um, it sort of sticks in your mouth in an unpleasant way. Like, I feel like if you eat the whole thing, you really re- regret it. That said, it's better than the barbecue and not as good as the original. So I sort of forced to stick with an indifferent to that. I, I would eat them and eat a few. I'm just not going to eat a whole lot of them. So indifferent to that. All right, Gagger, we, we have put together, this episode is like a special cocktail just for you. Just like yeah. th- people put together s- their own drugs. This, these, <laughs> it's all chips. This is your illuminator. Yeah. So what do you think of the cheddar? What is your intention here, Gagger? <laughs> <laughs> to eat every last, eat every chip we provide you with today? So far I have. I was going to say, have you finished like, all of them? We got empty containers all across the board. <laughs> I didn't eat dinner. Chrissy's like, ah, oh, yeah, I mean, I couldn't possibly eat the whole thing. I don't know who could. And I'm like, whoa, just you wait. Um, I will say, and this is surprising to me, I like these less than I like the barbecue. I you normally don't like barbecue chips as much. These are really I you guys all said what needed to be said, mm-hmm. and that is that all of these are very artificial tasting. Um the cheese just doesn't taste I'm sorry, all of the cheddar ones. Now I still ate the whole thing, but I, they all tasted very <laughs> artificial. Um and it wasn't nearly as good. And I felt like that again, it was just a real the aftertaste was worse. Uh, for these. Please, I don't know. please give them a like that after we just talked about how you finished. No, no, chip. I, I'm, I'm giving like it that, an I mean. indifferent. I give oh, me okay. an indifferent. I'll eat indifferent food until it's gone. I hate to break yeah. it, to you, man. Uh, yeah. No, you break it. You've eaten disliked food. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I'm Mr. Chip just because I can't stop eating, not because I enjoy it. Okay, so what was that? Three, what? Three dislikes and an indifferent. Two indifference, two dislikes. Oh, okay, two yeah. indifference, yeah, indifferent two dislikes. Yeah, indifferent for me, too. Okay. I can't remember mm-hmm. four things. Three is don't worry. That's why. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I got my spreadsheet. Okay, we're good. good. <laughs> okay, we're going to pause from Pringles. 
uh, to give Geiger a stomach a little time to sit. Yeah, I appreciate this. And Make, also, draw this out. <laughs> <laughs> and Chrissy, this is the first ever guest designed segment in the history of You Tried That. So I, we are super excited. Chrissy, what do you got? Me too. I am I am very happy. I plotted this out a couple of weeks ago when I found out I might be able to join you guys. And I remain committed. So I hope you guys enjoy it as much as me. But my favorite segment on the show that you guys do, other than the creepy Halloween costumes, because that is a classic, mm-hmm. uh, is Mount Snackmore. Mm, okay. It's beloved. Many, right. many people tell me they like it. Yeah. Beloved, yes. Um, and I find myself when I'm listening to you guys and you're doing a Mount snack more, I'm like, I, I usually am walking while I'm listening to your podcast and I find myself like gesticulating and arguing and being like, oh God, how can German food make the top five of your Mount snack yeah. more, guys? I remember getting some texts from you. I think you were pretty pissed about the German food and also the low placement of Vietnamese food, I think. Yeah. You were kind yeah, of upset yeah. about. Yeah, justifiably so. Did somebody yeah. see you doing that walking the street and be like, oh, she for sure wants to go to this drug retreat? <laughs> <laughs> She's currently on a drug retreat. <laughs> yeah. Is this a Mount Rush medicine more? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in per- it's in Peru. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you guys have kindly welcomed me back to America. I have been away for about nine months. And so what a perfect time for me to put together Mount Murica more. <laughs> Okay. Oh uh-huh. <laughs> what is so this? I have selected 10 foods that I think are very representative of American cuisine okay. uh, okay. for you guys to rank. So get your pens and your pencils because this does right. cover quite a wide spectrum of foods. So there's be- breakfast food, lunch food, and dinner food. I hope one of them is prongles. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's more American. <laughs> Once you pop, make America great again. <laughs> So some of these foods you can you can find in other countries to to different degrees, but these are foods in my travels and 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 what I think about when coming back to the U.S. of things that are really difficult to find decent versions of overseas, or you just can't find them at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys ready? Yeah. Show. Born ready. Okay. First one, cheeseburger. Okay, they have burgers all over the world, but I feel like Americans mm-hmm. really elevated cheeseburger to. A very sort of American level, but your classic cheeseburger, nothing fancy, no peanut butter, no bacon, just cheeseburger. Second, hot dog. Mm -hmm. Third, mac and cheese. It's going to be tough. Next, meatloaf. Not as tough. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Next, uh, a BLT, the king of sandwiches. Mm. Really? My wife would agree with you there. Yeah, Yeah, the first thing I want when I come back to the U.S. is a BLT every time. All right. Wait till I shit on it. (laughs) uh next tater tots never seen a tater tot outside of north america Geiger famously hates tater tots what yeah Yeah, it's insane we'll get hey there's a we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there (laughs) okay okay. teasing (laughs) it out it's the worst opinion (laughs) okay uh next uh bagel and cream cheese next biscuits and gravy next uh clam chowder New England style. We're talking creamy. <laughs> I don't know why that one made me laugh. It just seems really <laughs> oddly placed. Clam chowder. Chowder. And the last one, arguably the most American of American foods, the PB and J. Oh wow, these are hard to rank against. We're just food. such fat American slabs and just like <laughs> dro- drooling as you list this food. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ah. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I did my ranking ahead of time because I didn't want to get influenced by your faces. I wanted it to be completely legit, my belief, but it was very difficult, as I believe every Mount Snackmore should be done with yep. like, the utmost sincerity. For sure. Of course. Okay, so my rankings, uh, starting with number 10, uh, yep. biscuits and gravy. Wow. <laughs> what? Holy what? shit. Coming in what hot. the fuck? <laughs> They're fine. No. They're fine. I Keep like your em. fucking talking stick and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sending me to the abortion doctor? <laughs> Why? I'm sending, this, I'm sending this segment there. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I like them. But but uh, in terms of this list, this is a pretty stellar list of, of, of fabulous American food. So it's on my number 10. Uh, number nine, clam chowder. 
Also, I like it, but it's not something I crave. It's not something I seek out. Uh, it's something like very specific to like a cold, rainy day is when you want it. And probably only in New England. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to eat clam chowder just on a, on a regular Wednesday. Number eight, a hot dog. Hot dogs are fine, but uh, they're really only good at a baseball game. Fair. Any other time you're eating a hot dog is, is sort of embarrassing for everybody involved. It's embarrassing? What's embarrassing about eating a hot dog? <laughs> They're so low brow. You got brats. You got sausages. You got burgers. You have so many. Have you listened to this fucking podcast? <laughs> we are the lowest brow of all brows. We're eating a fucking six pack of Pringles. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so number eight, hot dog. Uh, number seven. See, we really get into my, some of my favorite foods here. So number seven is much lower than I'd like it to be. I'm a bit sad about this, but Geiger, apparently you'll like it, is tater tots. Yeah. So tater tots are number seven, yeah. but they're damn good. Salty, crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. I do love a tater tot. Number six, I love meatloaf. I love meatloaf. It is my comfort food. It is my comfort meal. Like my mom's shitty, like Betty Crocker cookbook meatloaf. Nothing fancy, but just straight up meatloaf is is a comfort food for me. So that's my number six. Took a shot at your mom there. (laughs) (laughs) Wisconsin mom's not exactly known for their culinary skills. Can confirm. Mm Mm-hmm. Ding. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, the meatloaf's ready. (laughs) (laughs) Number five. Uh, cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers are great. They're great. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four, we're really getting into my, now we're getting into the, my, my Mount Snap more. So I guess cheeseburger makes my crazy horse. Yep. My top four, I love peanut butter and jelly. Mm. Amen. It is classic. It is tastes like home. It tastes like comfort. It tastes like childhood. I can eat one for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, they're easy to make. They're fast. Yes. And highbrow as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pinkies up when you're eating the PB&J. <laughs> I love PB&J. So they are on my Mount Snackmore. Uh, number three, mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is fabulous. Mm. Chad, I know you'll back me up on this. Number two, uh, a bagel and cream cheese. Okay. That's awesome. One of the first things I want when I come back home is a good bagel, whipped cream cheese, toasted, the combination of flavors, combination of textures. It is a solid uh, love for me. And number one, the king of sandwiches, the greatest sandwich of all time. Not so fancy, but classic in every way is the BLT. Bacon, lettuce, tomato. I love it. It's salty. It's sweet. It's crispy. It's soft. BLT, number one all the way. All right, that's a that's a, a bad take, but we'll see how. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's set? Who's set? Okay, I'll go next. So number ten, I actually find this food disgusting. This was an easy number ten for me. Clam chowder is gross. Number nine, the BLT. I don't like tomato, and I actually don't like lettuce either on a sandwich. So in general, so uh, that really? was easy number nine. Number eight, I went meatloaf. Meatloaf is fine, but uh, nothing special about meatloaf. This is where it got tough. Mm-hmm. Now, number seven, I put hot dog. Now, I love a hot dog. I love a really, really good hot dog. If you could guarantee that it'd be a top-notch hot dog, I'd put it higher. But there is way too much variability in hot dogs. If you get, like, a hot dog from 7-Eleven, it's fucking disgusting. So I never do that, but, like... You get a hot dog from a street vendor. Which one of these a- foods at 7-Eleven would be good? Which one of them? <laughs> the clam chowder, I guarantee you. It would be awesome at 7-Eleven. <laughs> I mean, you could get a box of mac and cheese from 7-Eleven. Uh, <laughs> all right. Number six, I went bagel and cream cheese. Now, I do like a good bagel and cream cheese, but most of the time I'll get something else on the bagel, some smoked salmon or something like that. Number five, PB&J. Again, I love PB&J, but um, it really depends on the jelly. There are some bad jellies out there, uh, so that can be a little variable. So, uh, But it's still very good. What? Right. what? Some bad <laughs> tainted jelly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weirdest take I've ever heard. Actually, <laughs> taint is Chad's favorite flavor of jelly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, put, I prefer the taint flavor to the armpit flavor. So, uh, number four, tater tots. This is easy. I love tater tots. I think it is the best potato preparation you can have. 
Whoa. What? Love what kind of bullshit is that? What I the pick... fuck? You've eaten too much chain of jelly, if that's your opinion. Scratch that. Uh, scallop potatoes, number one. Tater tots, number two. I will pick tater tots over french fries nine times out of ten. Number three, biscuits and gravy. One of my favorite brunch foods. It's so good. I just don't get it that often because it is so, so heavy. But you get like a nice sausage gravy over there, some eggs on the side. It's fantastic. So... This was tough. I could have gone either way, one and two with these two. I went number two, mac and cheese, simply because they're like the the box mix mac and cheese. It just needs some like a little bit of sprucing up to like really be a great meal, right? You got to throw some like little smokies in there or like toast some breadcrumbs and throw it on top, something like that. But like a restaurant mac and cheese is like the best thing you can get in the world. Um, Chad, you toasted him with some <laughs> breadcrumbs when you're making Easy Mac. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we do. Uh, so, <laughs> number, <laughs> number one for me is the cheeseburger. I just fucking love a cheeseburger. It's so, so, so good. Can't beat a cheeseburger. All right, who's next? Oh, these. This is going to be insane to figure out who wins this. This yeah. is nuts. Geiger, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. If you want, go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I don't think it's a big spoiler. Number 10, where they fucking belong, is tater tots. Tater tots are bad. (laughs) They are fucking bad. I don't know if it's a texture thing or they just taste like shit to me, but I don't like tater tots at all. Not one They taste like shit. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. They taste like feces. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) Okay. Fecal matter. They're, They're fried potatoes. We have all yelled, this is dog shit, multiple times in this podcast. We all know that's not a literal statement, but I just don't like, I don't, I, I, I understand that I'm in the, well in the minority on this. I just don't like tater tots. Do you like hash browns? Yes. Don't question me anymore. No, okay. Uh, Oof, okay. Uh, no, no, I'm kidding. Okay. No, I'm kidding. No, they, they, I think, that, honestly, I really do think it is the tater tot in the middle sometimes has that weird, like crunchy consistency. And I hate that. Um, I don't know. I, maybe we just made tater tots poorly when I grew up, but I understand that if I like hash browns, I should like both. I just don't know why I don't. Huh. Number nine is meatloaf. I want to be clear. Meatloaf is fine, but meatloaf is exactly that. It's fine. Never come home excited to eat meatloaf. It's there. Uh, eight is PB and J. I want to be, again, I like PB and J fine. I grew up eating a PB and J almost every day. And then when I became an adult, I ate other stuff. So I don't eat it anymore. Yeah, let's just see all your fucking adult choices that are listed at the top of this list. <laughs> Look, I'm an adult that eats hot dogs. <laughs> Look, now that I'm grown up, for my dinner, I eat five containers of Pringles. <laughs> uh, but I just don't eat as much. If, if I look, if there was like, like a PB and J, like my I don't, I, that was there for some reason at a party, I would eat it. I just don't often anymore. Uh, it's a child's birthday party. <laughs> right. Seven, I'll go BLT. Uh, it is not the king of sandwiches. It is a good sandwich. I don't like tomato anyway. I so my BLTs are bacon, lettuce, mayonnaise. Which is a good sandwich. Oh my um, god, that sounds way worse somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you don't put mayonnaise on a BLT? No, you have to have mayonnaise, but without right. the without tomato. the tomato, it throws off the you don't you don't have the sweetness. Okay, well mm. that's how I do it, and that's why it's ranked there. Um, six, <laughs> hot dog. Okay, uh, hot dogs are fine. Again, I don't ever go out of my way to go get a hot dog. I'll make them at home. Because we'll have them for the kids, and I'll eat one if there's a one left over from like grilling. Maybe, yeah, and maybe at a baseball game, you're right, uh, Christy, about that. But other than that, I'm like, like when people go to a restaurant or something, or like a fast food place and get a hot dog, it's just bizarre to me because it's something that's like, why would you order that? You can make it at home. Maybe not a restaurant, but like, uh, <laughs> but like a drive-in hamburger place, like getting a hot dog is like strange. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like when you go to Ruth's Chris and you order the hot dog, it's just kind of right. Awesome. Right. <laughs> Number five, cheeseburger. I like burgers fine. I just, to me, the point of a burger is all the stuff you pile on top of it. The meat itself doesn't thrill me. It's just ground beef. They're good. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy a good burger, but I even like when I go to McDonald's, I'll get like a chicken sandwich. I'm not a huge, huge burger nut. They're fine. I like them, but five uh four clam chowder i love a really good clam chowder i really do 
um, like a good one with a lot of crab in it. It's like kind of clumpy and thick, like before, uh, like a seafood dinner or something. I love a nice cup of clam chowder. Uh, three, bagel and cream cheese. I kind of feel like this is on the list just to make me say the word bagel uh, without <laughs> screwing it up, to be honest here. I feel set up. Uh, it vaguely tastes a like cream cheese <laughs> when I make it. Uh, I love a sesame seed bagel in the morning, and I definitely like putting cream cheese on it. I also am plain cre- cream cheese or get the fuck out. I don't like veggie cream cheese. I don't like chive cream cheese. I don't like salmon cream cheese. Yeah, it's All that best. stuff Agreed. tastes good for a couple bites, hmm. and then after that, I want to throw it away. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, two, mac and cheese. It's only two. I think mac and cheese, pound for pound, is the tastiest thing here. Uh, but it will make me violently shit myself. So I will only eat it in small, very small doses. I recently made mac and cheese for my wife, uh, gluten-free mac and cheese. Uh, and I ate some of that. And it's really good. I love it, despite the lack of uh, gluten. Um, but I just can't eat that much of it. And number one, uh, I love bits and, uh, biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy is fantastic. What? I love it. The sausage gravy, the biscuits, and the, like get us like a side of eggs with it, too. Um, it's a heavy meal. Uh, I, I, one of you said that and I agree with that. Uh, but it's so good, like really well done biscuits and really well done, like sausage gravy with it is so delicious. So of these, that's probably my favorite. So biscuits and gravy, the gravy is like flour, water, and lard, right? Yep. In, so the, the, <laughs> and, and sausage. sausage and pepper. And, and like, yeah. So the only thing separating gravy from paper mache is lard okay <laughs> if i went to brunch and too. biscuits and paper mache, yeah, I'd eat that I mean, too. Yeah. Chrissy, now you've got me wanting to find that mattress that's all i can say about that <laughs> you're number one fascinating like if you if you never had biscuits and gravy again you'd be very sad yeah and you and i are kind of flip-flopped right because your uh-huh, last one uh-huh. is biscuits and gravy yep. and like tater yep. tots is pretty high for you and that's my last one so we're kind of uh-huh. inverted a little uh-huh. Bit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. let me tell you guys the correct like i'm gonna give you the correct numbers okay? oh here it is let's hear it <laughs> learn us here buddy put pbj one. number 10 clam chowder i'm not a seafood fan like outside of shrimp i would never order it number nine blt i it's just going it's a personal thing for me I once, like a, years back, five or five or six years back, had a sandwich with bacon on it. Got deathly ill. Will never eat a sandwich with bacon on it again for the rest of my life. Won't do it. Burger, sandwich, anything. BLT's out. It's nine. I hope. I'm hoping it's enough to pull it out of Mount Rushmore. The number eight biscuits and gravy. It's okay. It's just not. I, it's not that good. Like I get that it's very popular in certain parts of the country. Um, this is not one of those parts. Honestly, I probably never had a really good biscuits and gravy, but I w- I've never seek it out. Number seven, tater tots. To say that they are the best potato preparation is yeah, the fucking, <laughs> fucking craziest insane. take in the history of you tried that. <laughs> that is <Yeah>. bizarre. <laughs> number seven or number six, meatloaf. Uh, meatloaf's good. I have no problem with meatloaf. It's not as good as some of these other things. Um, it's just real middling food. Number five, the hot dog. I like a hot dog. I will defend the hot dog. I know, like people, it will uh, guy you shit all over the hot dog. Um, it's it was ranked six. You had a five. Six. It wasn't that now, no. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, but you talked about how you wouldn't go out and get it. Why would someone get it? Chrissy called it lowbrow. Look, I you guys are really t- too rough on the hot dog. It's good. Uh, number six, mac and cheese, or number four, mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, I think the good thing about mac and cheese is even the shittiest like preparation of it still tastes pretty mm-hmm. good. Yeah, that's that's, that's what point. it has over some of these other things, like a bad versions of these. Three is the bagel and cream cheese. This is a good example because Fair. to have something like a Thomas bagel or something like that is bad. Like I don't even want to eat that. But a very good bagel and cream cheese from like a nice deli. Is so good, so good, and you can actually like switch around the type of bagel. I agree, the cream cheese has to be plain, but switch around the bagel can be good. Number two, PB and J. Well, PB and J is so good. I still, yes! I'll go through like month long spans where I'll have a PB and J nightly, like before bed. the The flavor combination is so good. Jelly tainted, jelly. Fine, like the good <laughs> jellies, the bad jellies, I want them all. But I, 
the other caveat is it needs to be grape jelly. Don't give me this fucking strawberry and P- PB and uh, J. So. Mm, I love strawberry. Mm, me too. And the final number one, and it wasn't really a tough choice, is the cheeseburger. A cheeseburger oh done well. If you take the best preparation of every one of these foods, the cheeseburger has no competition on this list. It's so good. It's the one that I would go to seek out if someone says this place has a good blank cheeseburger of this list i would go find it's the number one food novak i just gotta say i was so confident you were gonna put pb and j number one once you got to the top two that i had already filled it in <laughs> <laughs> i had to go back in and change my scores all right so uh here's the final ranking i've tallied the totals here uh last place uh not even close with 33 points clam chowder we all hated it uh ninth nope. place with we almost <laughs> hated it. <laughs> Ninth place, uh, 29 points, Meatloaf. Uh, sadly, uh, then with 28 points is uh, Tater Tot's Best Potato Preparation. Uh, six pl- <laughs> seventh uh, with 26. Uh, so actually, we have a tie for sixth and seventh with 26 points between the hot dog and the BLT. Mm. Right. Crazy horse time. Wow. Crazy horse. Uh, number five with 22, Biscuits and Gravy. Biscuits and gravy is our crazy horse. Wow. So, Got paper enough mache. There. Crazy horse loved biscuits and gravy. <laughs> <laughs> our, so our Mount America Moore, a.k.a. Mount America Snack Moore, is uh, number four with 19, PB&J. Yes. Number three with 14, Bagel and Cream Cheese. So you guys say. <laughs> uh, and then it was very close. Our second place has 12 points. That's Cheeseburger. And the number one with 11 points, mac and cheese. Wow. Even though none of us ranked it number one, but it In was pretty high. In the George Washington it. position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just got those big old cheesy titties hanging out. <laughs> That's fair. Ooh. Great. All right. That was interesting. It's a good list. Okay, well, we've got uh, two chips left to eat. Let's get to those. We're going to do the pizza Pringles next. I'm excited about uh, these. I know some of you guys thought it was not going to be good, but I actually think this these could be decent. What's make what makes something taste like pizza that's not pizza? Like how would you get a pizza flavor? It's just tomato, right? It does taste like pizza. Tomato with like oregano or something. Mm, yeah, yeah, like Italian spices and maybe garlic. Even though garlic isn't on pizzas usually. Well, there's no garlic in this ingredients list. I'll tell you that. Garlic powder. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Except for that. There it is. Except for that one. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I'm first this time around. And I think I might be separated from people on this too. But I think these are pretty good. These are my favorite of the ones we've tried so far. They do taste like pizza. I get <laughs> that a pizza Pringle is very lowbrow. Okay, I do understand <laughs> that. Mm-hmm. The flavor accuracy is three dunks. Okay, it's good. <laughs> I like the flavor of pizza. I think it goes okay with this chip. Um, and I, I don't know if the likes just because I like it better than the other ones, but I'm going to give it a like that to start out. Chrissy, you're next. What do you think? I'm surprised. I didn't think I would like this because I usually find the, the pizza one just as artificial as the cheddar, but I don't find it as, as like a strong hit your mouth flavor as the cheddar one. It's it has a bit, it even has some sort of layers of flavor. Like we're saying, it's, it's kind of hard to say what all the different flavors are. I, I'm going to eat this whole thing. Um, so I'll go with like that. Like that for pizza, Pringles, surprisingly. All right. Uh, Novak, my man. Yeah. What kind of fucking pizza are you eating, bro? I want to know what kind of pizza <laughs> you're having over there that this tastes to you like pizza. Yeah. How this... is this? How is this three dunk pizza? I have 10 year olds. I order whatever pizza was advertised on TV for $5.99. Were you ordering crust with salt sprinkled on it? I don't like these that much. Um, and you can tell because I only ate a few, fellas. You said that in such a way that you struggled to say that as Mr. Chip. Uh, it was I really don't harsh for me. Like these that much. <laughs> They're still great, but no, I don't. <laughs> To me, this is a worse version of the barbecue chip. It's like still got that sweet tomatoiness, but it, I don't know what about it. I don't like it nearly as much. It does not. For any of you out there listening, it doesn't taste like pizza. Let's just get that clear. Go eat a pizza. It's much better to eat a pizza. Um, not for yeah. your health, just for It tastes like pizza, pizza flavoring. It doesn't taste like an actual pizza. 
<laughs> when I walk in and expect a nice piping hot Papa John's, one way, and instead I've got on my table a warmed up bag of Pringles, I'm not going to be happy about that. Novak, the original tasted way more like original than this tastes like pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like potato and salt. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll make it quick. It's still okay. I'll give it an indifferent. I can eat it. It's a chip. But uh, uh, I don't think it tastes great. Okay. Two likes and indifferent. All right. What's it going to be? I, did I eat the wrong chip? Uh, <laughs> these things are fucking awful. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I knew my boy Chad with me with you on this. I don't like pizza to begin with, but once I pop, that's dog shit. This thing is getting an easy, easy hate that. These are terrible. What? They're the hate? worst ones by far. That's a hate that for sure. They're awful. Can, this is too innocuous to hate it. You are not liking the smell of these pheromones. <laughs> no, I'm not at all. No. <laughs> smell terrible. I could I could use this like in that old pizza commercial. I could take this to Italy. I could serve this to customers <laughs> and then be like, that's not pizza. That's pizza favorite, flavored Pringles. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> oh. <laughs> take you like a pizza like uh, slice holder and plating chips down on their plate. Like just picking up like it's all gooey. Is surprise though you Italian? Is that, is that real Italian? For the sake of this podcast, yes. Surprise-o. I hope surprise though is actually I'm sorry, please don't hurt me, because that's what I really Okay, so original, only one competitor stands in its way. And to be honest, this was the one I was most excited about coming into today. It's cheddar and sour cream mm. together at last people are always asking hey why aren't they combining cheddar and sour cream <laughs> well here you go cheese cream it's got it all <laughs> just a hint of sour <laughs> okay chrissy you are leading off our last competitor what do you think this was also the flavor i was looking forward to the most i think cheddar and sour cream ruffles are maybe my favorite chip of all time. Delicious. Fritos are a close second. I do love a corn chip. But cheddar and sour cream is a great combination. It's distinct. It's layered. It, it's heavy. So I don't know that I could eat a whole ton of these. Your breath is rotten after eating these, but it's worth it. Uh, they're tasty. They're addicting. Going back for more, this is a uh, solid like that for me. Okay. Like that to start. It is still very much in the game. Gaga. These are very good. I agree that um, the cheddar and sour cream ruffles are very good. Uh, these are also very good. I like that combination of flavors a lot. I love sour cream and onion chips. Uh, they do give you horrid dragon breath, but I will give this a solid like that. It's still not, I just have a nostalgia for the original and it's the original still my favorite. I think I could eat more of the original before getting tired of it. Whereas I would eventually weary of this flavor, uh, but they're very good. All right, two likes, Chad. All right, I'm going to make this interesting for you, Novak. Uh, This is easily the best flavor we've had tonight. I don't get that same bad aftertaste that we got from just the straight-up cheddar. This is the first flavor that I've actually eaten more than two of, and I thought it was my intention to eat actually the entire package here, but I did stop about halfway through. So they're still very, very good, though, so I'm going to give them a like that. Now, Novak... If you get that means if you give them a like that, they win. If you give them an indifferent, it'll tie with the original flavor. Here's the thing. Oh boy. <laughs> it's time for an old old here's the thing. Okay, it's the package says cheddar and sour cream. Do I taste much cheddar? Not really. Uh-oh. Do I taste a lot of sour cream? Not really. But I still like them. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you tasting? I don't know. There's an intangible quality that makes the, the potato and a, salt. <laughs> it tastes it tastes pretty good, like whatever the flavor is. But it's neither one of those is strong. I don't know if they're canceling each other out or what it is. But I would open one of these slightly more than I would open the original. I, I think it is close. I, I think these two deserve to be one and two for sure. But I'm going to put the cheddar and sour cream in the winner's circle. Um, with a like debt. A welcome visitor is the winner, the cheddar and sour cream Pringles. I think that was probably the right choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was most universally 
agreed upon uh, chip. So we had one love and I think one hate today. So we spanned the globe of uh, chips. Gagger, where can the listeners contact us to tell us about what... Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of Pringles uh, flavors. Yeah. They're always coming up with new ones. It's like Oreo. So uh, we'd like to hear their preferences. Where can they do that? Uh, yes, please let us know what you think about Pringles, the various flavors and varieties and shapes and whatnot. Um, also, please let us know if you've been on the messenger journeys. Uh, if you've seen my talking stick, I think I left it there last time. <laughs> Uh, probably about <laughs> blabbing to itself in the corner. Yeah, it won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Please uh, bring a black light and shine it over that mattress. Just clear things up for everybody. Um, and if you'd like to let us know what you think about snacks in general, about our ratings, suggest new uh, snacks for us to try. Leave a message for the uh, leave a, a question for the mailbag. You can reach us at you tried at gmail dot com. We are on Twitter hashtag you tried that. We're on Facebook with the you tried that group. We are on Instagram. We are on YouTube. Uh, come find us. Come listen. Leave a review. Leave us a like. Uh, tell your friends. And uh, thanks as always for listening. Geiger, are there any Pringle flavors you like more than original? Or is that your mm. favorite? No, I'd say most of the Pringle flavors we have here are the ones I've eaten the most. I do, I do really like the sour cream and onion ones uh, that, like we said, we tried before. I'm trying to think. No, I don't think so. We had did, we tried a different, didn't we try like a hard, like wavy one that had like something not like i thought we tried a different variety too. we tried like, like a turkey oh, oh, that's right yeah, we, we did try those idea. turkey ones those were not yeah. great they were, they were eerily accurate but they were not great so um chrissy told us a harrowing tale yeah with which in which one one event was worse than the previous just on top of the other so um for you guys at which point in this story chrissy went through the whole damn thing and was a trooper all the way but at which point in that story, are you ducking out of this? Let's say you have access to your own car, mm-hmm. right? And I guess, Chrissy, will say, if you had access to your own car, would you have ducked out? So at which point in the story are you saying, fuck this, I'm leaving? Or I guess more appropriately, you would like call like a lift or something because you probably shouldn't drive on yeah. medicine, right? <laughs> drugs. It's medicine. Drugs. It's medicine. It's, medicine. it's drugs. Medicine. Right. Medicine. <laughs> It's Chrissy. drugs. It's not illegal to drive on medicine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had a headache, officer. Prescribed by a Peruvian shaman. No, no, no. A friend of a Peruvian shaman. <laughs> I think I would have stayed the whole time, like, mostly out of, like, morbid curiosity. And, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like you never really felt like you were in danger or anything no. like that. So, yeah, I, I see no reason to, to duck out. Not even when you're getting defiled by the talking stick on the mattress? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, that mattress better have been a memory foam or else uh, I'm not getting defiled by any talking sticks on it. <laughs> Inner spring, fuck this shit. I'm ducking out. <laughs> it's in the mattress just raising and lowering it. It's a sleep numbers. <laughs> Everybody there's lining up just to smell your pheromones. <laughs> Exactly. They smell like mac and cheese and Oreo. (laughs) I think I'm ducking out when the guy says, Hey, I got this thing. It's just a hundred bucks. I'm like, Whoa, whoa, slow down, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Even if you could slyly never pay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I think the the slightest hint of hippy dippiness would have me running from my car. I like the whole like sit in a circle and share our feelings is not really congruent with my Wisconsin upbringing. I don't like, can you be like a angry German person just burying all your feelings deep down inside and <laughs> maybe only letting them loose on the talking stick? <laughs> You're much more friendly than the stick my father used to beat me with. <laughs> I'm kidding. He didn't do that. He also didn't drop me off at a fucking hippie house full of druggos either. <laughs> so I appreciate that. He would have. It. He's always trying to make you into more of a man in all these stories. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Go yeah. defend yourself against all these junkies. Oh, Dad, what? <laughs> you kill three hippies or you do not come back. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me the scalps of a hippie. What? I, why? I don't know. I'm confused. Everyone was really... <laughs> State your intention. 
Uh, well, I, <laughs> I have pretty clear instructions to kill three of you. I don't know what... But, sorry. These dreadlocks were tied post-mortem. <laughs> I want three hippie scalps and one hippie armpit. You know who it needs to be. Just let me cut off your pinky ring finger. He'll believe me. I killed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, murder. Well, um, <laughs> we want to give a special thanks to Chrissy yes. for joining us. We um, we had always hoped you'd be coming back at some point, and we thought it could be who knew when. And then Chad said you were coming into town, so we organized this quickly, and we're so happy to have you and to see you. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. I was super happy too, and it was. I did have to laugh because I'd I'd held. You guys have already done episodes on uh, snacks I sent from Iceland. Uh, some more tax snacks from Tunisia and I Libya, yeah. just sent them out a couple of weeks ago in the mail spending like $45 to send them in the mail and then if I had just waited a few more weeks I could have just <laughs> carried it in my suitcase but you know what you guys are worth it you really you really want to waste a bunch of suitcase space on fucking fermented fish and shit <laughs> <laughs> We will say uh, until next time. We look forward to having you on again in the future. Thanks, guys. Um, I love listening to you guys. You bring that that taste of of Midwestern Americana to my ears every week, and I love it. <laughs> Midwestern Americana is a lot of dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm more alive. laughs> We've got some upcoming. Uh, the Halloween episode will be next week. But that'll be it for this time, and we'll be back next time. We'll be trying out three brand new snacks. Yes. Yep. Okay.